So we talked a bit about our floppy connector earlier, and now we actually want to look a little bit more at our actual floppy drive, what it can do and how much information it can hold on for us. A floppy disk drive actually comes in a few different types, but the most standard that we're going to be seeing is our 3.5 inch floppy disk drive. Fits into our standard connector that we still see in quite a few computers still. A couple different ways that they put the information onto the floppy disk drives, the different types of drives that they have allow us to save different amounts of information. Our first standard floppy disk drive is going to be known as our DSDD. Similar to how we have our dual layer DVDs versus our single layer DVDs, this is also the way they uh, create the disks in the floppy drives to store information. Our DSDD will store up to 720 kilobytes of data. Not very much at all by today's standards. The next step up would be our DSHD which allows us to store up to 1.44 megabytes of data. And then lastly, we have our DSED, which lets us store up to 2.88 megabytes of data. And that's our max. Our 2.88 megabytes of data on our standard 3.5 inch floppy uh, is going to be what we get. So that amount of information really isn't uh, much in, account in, uh, in terms of installing programs or putting software on floppies. So we really only use these for situations where we have emergency recovery or we need uh, critical information that we have to have some alternate means of having that application or that recovery software on a drive to be able to roll back to. And that's where floppy drives or floppy disk drives still come in handy. Now our floppy disk drives and our floppy drive we want to make sure that we still have the correct CMOS configuration, um, our, our correct BIOS configuration, and we want to have our floppy disk drive enabled. Um, we want also want to make sure that our connectors are facing the right way. Uh, again, our cable for our floppy disk drive has a twist at the end. That twist is going to be the end that we put on our floppy disk drive. The end without a twist goes toward our motherboard. So. One symptom that we'll see if we incorrectly connect our floppy drive is the LED light will just stay lit. Um, whether it's reading data, writing data, or not, the LED will not go off on the front of this drive and it won't read the information properly. That's a sign that our cable is backwards. If you see that symptom, the best thing to do is just go oh, turn off the computer, open it up, and swap the cable, and you should notice that that symptom goes away. We also have write protection, which is our small hole. Um, that we'll see in the upper right of our floppy drive when we're looking at it from the front. When we have the hole open, it's protected. This, me this tells our computer not to write anything to our floppy disk. When we close the drive, or when we close the hole, then it's unprotected. Then we can write to that disk. We don't want to touch any, any of the uh, metal slider, anything inside of here, that disk in there. We never want to mess with. We don't want to touch that or it can corrupt the... Um, corrupt the information. We also don't want this uh, to come too close to uh, any magnetic surfaces. The last type of storage device that we want to take a look at is going to be our tape drive. Now, our tape drive is no longer typically used for um, home purposes or home backups, but we still see it a lot with server situations. This is an example of one of our tape drives here, and the tapes that we insert inside of it look like these. These tapes hold different amounts of information based on the tape type. They allow us to read and write data sequentially, like when you watch a movie on, say, VHS. You can only read the data one way. You can't skip around to the dif different chapters like you can on DVD. You, the data can be read one way, and then we have to go, th when we're doing a backup or doing a restore, we have to go through that tape in one direction. We can't skip around and find the exact place that the data is on. Data on tape drives can be stored compressed, or is referred to as compressed or uncompressed data. And for knowledge purposes, we're going to go ahead and go through a couple uh, tape drive capacities, and this is going to be their capacities when the information is compressed onto them at a 2 to 1 ratio, a 2 ratio of compression to uh, 1 uncompressed, so double the data uncompressed. When the data is compressed on a Travon tape drive, we can store up to 40 gigabytes of data on our single tape drive. The next type is we're going to have DDS, which can be up to 72 gigabytes, followed by SLR, 
which can have up to 140 gigabytes. VXA can have up to 320 gigabytes. AIT can have up to 800 gigabytes of data. DLT can have up to 1.6 terabytes of data. And lastly, our LTO Ultram 5th edition can actually store up to 3 terabytes of data. This comes in handy in situations where, say, we need to actually back up a server. Um, we need to have a lot, we have a big server environment where we have a lot of information that we want to back up, and we don't want to place, uh, purchase disks to put that information on. We don't want to purchase uh tons and tons of hard drives to back up that data on. Maybe it's data that we don't need to recover as quickly because with tape drives, you have to go through it sequentially and recover and pull back everything. Um, so this information that's older, it may be information that we don't need to recover as quickly, but it's still viable information. It's still information that we need to keep on record just in case we need to go back to it. Well, we can use tape drives. And as you can see with some of the higher end tape drives, we can store up to three terabytes of uh, information per tape. And we can actually create those tape backups, put them in a uh, controlled humidity humidity controlled, temperature controlled storage, and then uh, possibly even put them off site for even more safekeeping. And those tapes will be there in case we need to go back to that information and pull it back and create those backups. Um, tape drives can be very expensive to start out because you have to buy all the equipment to uh, have the tape drives created. Uh, they do have tape, the larger tape drive copiers like the one we showed earlier but there are smaller tape drive copiers that were in, could be installed in actual desktop computers, sort of where you would have your floppy drive or underneath, and then you pop a uh, tape drive in there and do your backup or restore it. But nowadays, tape drives are more really used in large environment situations. Thanks for joining us today with Cyber.at and checking out a lot of the, all of these different types of uh, external storage devices, internal storage devices, and all their connectors. Hopefully you'll be able to use this knowledge as you go on in with IT or even just use it at home with your own personal IT. And just a little bit of extra knowledge can go a long way. And we'll hope to see you next time.